All right, fellow YouTubers, this is Ryan from QRFTactical.com. Doing another video here for you, this time in response to a forum question on AmmoSmith.com about reloading in an apartment with limited space. Uh, I live in an apartment and I used to reload on a end table that I had converted into a reloading bench with my Lee single stage press and it was about two feet tall by two feet wide by two feet deep and it just didn't suit my purposes, hurt my back when I was sitting on the couch trying to use it. So I decided I would like to have a full size reloading bench for my apartment. Um, problem is, they're about $300 if you go to Brown Owls or MidwayUSA.com. Not that there aren't cheaper models, but the ones I wanted to do what I wanted to do with it were about that much. Uh, secondarily, I'm six foot seven and nobody really makes a bench for somebody my height to work with standing or sitting to be very comfortable. So the only other option I had was to build my own. I went to Home Depot and I spent about $70 on a, a few different items. And we'll talk about those just in a few minutes. But let's go through the process of building a reloading bench that's customized for you. Um, you're not going to need a chop saw. You're not going to need a table saw. Any of the cuts that you need, Home Depot was more than happy to do them for me, and I'm sure that they would be more than happy to do them for you as well. I did have to use a small hand miter saw to do a couple of the fall small relief cuts on one of the pieces of plywood that we used for a base on a shelf. But other than that, Home Depot did all the cuts for me. Some of the tools that you will need, however, are obviously going to be first and foremost a tape measure. Secondly, you're going to need a pencil to do your measurements with and some sort of straight edge to make your lines across your boards for lining up um, any of the holes that you're going to have to drill or the boards where, is, where you're going to place them. You're going to need a small drill bit to uh, go ahead and drill out some of those holes so you don't split your timber as well as an, a smaller um, type wood boring bit. I'm using a quarter inch here to offset or the uh, head of the screw so those don't split the lumber as well. Um, so we're going to step outside here in just a minute and start the process. A list of materials will be at the end of this particular video. So if you had any questions about exactly what I said, they'll be in the, ca in the captions at the end. But briefly, I did two eight foot long four by fours and had those cut into four foot sections. My bench is four feet tall. By four feet long, by two feet deep, the uh, two by fours, I had two of those and had those each split into four foot sections, as well as two others each split into two foot sections that we then chopped three inches off of to make each one of those 21 inches and you're going to need six of those total 21 inch pieces. You're going to need four quarter inch carriage bolts with washers and nuts to go along with those as well as a box of decking screws, a quarter inch driver bit for your drill. Obviously you're going to need a power drill to do any of this kind of stuff and that's pretty much it. It was a pretty simple process to put together. I actually went ahead and added a pegboard at the end just because I had one lying around and I decided to put it on there. So let's step outside, go over some of the things that I did, some of the mistakes that I made as well, and what I learned from the process, and then we'll see the finished piece. All right, so what I've gone ahead and done is I've started to assemble the skeleton, the guts of the reloading tool. You can see it's going to be about yay tall for me, so I've got doing my reloading, I've got a good place to do uh, any type of reloading, whether it's handgun reloading that doesn't require, require a lot of torque, or if I'm doing uh, rifle reloading, it requires a pretty good amount of torque to get the shell casings to resize properly. I've got the ability to do that, either standing or sitting. First portion of that is taking the four foot long two by four and attaching it to the four foot tall four by fours. I'm doing that through carriage bolts. I've got a quarter inch carriage bolt on either end, I pre-drilled holes in the 2x4 as well as the 4x4 all the way through and I've offset it so that my 2x4 that is 21 inches long can sit in here and be secured to the 4x4 as well as the 2x4 on either side with the decking screws. I've got a quarter inch bolt on the back, or nut on the back with a washer and I've gone ahead and tightened that down and then I've done it on this side. I'm going to move on to the other set of legs and do that and then we'll connect them together with the 21 inch 2x4 and the decking screws.
Okay, so now we've got something that's actually standing, and what I've done to achieve that is I've taken these 21 inch 2x4s and I have secured them between the two pieces of 2x4 four by four, four by, by four that we connected with the carriage bolts. Now, one of the things that you'll notice is you need to be careful, like I wasn't, obviously, and I've got a crack there. Not really a big issue for me because it's a workbench, but if it was a piece of furniture, then that would be an issue. Um, when I was putting this together, I wanted to make more certain that the pieces of 2x4 were level with one another than they were with the top of the 4x4s because they were just rough cut by Home Depot. So they aren't all exactly 4 feet, but they are close enough that this project will work. The next portion of this is to set a support piece between, and I've gone ahead and marked 2 foot on both of these two different 2x4s, and on this one, I've set a center line and the outer edges so that I can make sure that my 2x4, when I center it, is actually indeed centered in the center of this particular project. So what I've done before I go ahead and set up the center 2x4 brace is I've gone ahead and I've drilled a couple of tap holes, and I did that so that the wood wouldn't split. And the second thing that I did was I drilled some offsets in these with my quarter inch wood boring bit. And that's so that when I set the screw, uh, the difference between the size of the actual boring portion of the screw and the head of the screw doesn't cause the wood to split. It's got some place to go and some place to get. Go. Alright, so now that we've got that piece in, let's see that it's in, it's flush to the tops, it's level. Now we're going to move on to the next portion, which is actually securing the base and making sure that the entire project is square before we start laying plywood. Alright, so we got the skeleton built. Uh, I should think it's important to note that I am not a carpenter. Uh, this is a, a hobby project, so if you're going to do a review, just remember that and don't be incredibly critical, but I do welcome your, your critiques. Um, we got the top on, got the center, center support in, bottom on, center support in. Um, it's as square as it's going to be. And now we're going to move on to putting the actual decking on. For the top we're going to use a three quarter inch plywood, we already talked about that. And the bottom we're going to use a one quarter inch plywood. We're not actually doing any loading on the bottom, it's just kind of a little storage area so I keep all my stuff and it's, it's in a neat place. And then when we get it inside the apartment we're actually going to put a pegboard on the top so I've got some places to hang some stuff. So let's go ahead and talk about putting the top on. When we put the top on, I'm ar I've already got holes pre-drilled and I'm going to offset those with my quarter inch wood boring bit. I'm doing that so that the plywood doesn't split as we put it on the top. So I'm going to go ahead and get that portion set and we'll talk about that when it's done. Alright, so we're starting to put the top on. We're doing a little bit of screw work here. Um, I like to start in a, in a corner, set these two screws and then work out from that. That way if there's any kind of warping in the plywood, I'm pushing it out and away from the board as I'm going along. I'm not going around and ending up having a, a bit of warping in the center where I can't get rid of it. So we're going to go this way and this way at the same time. When we hit this corner, we're going to push towards the edge. When we get down here, and we're going to finish up pushing out of this corner with the last screw being this screw here. Okay, so we've got our, our lid on, our work surface on, and nice and secure, nice and stable. Next thing we're going to do is we're going to actually come down here and we're going to put on the storage surface. And as you can see, it's not the exact same deal as up here. Uh, we've got a four foot by two foot piece of uh, quarter inch plywood and we've got to offset this. So what we're going to do is we're going to bring that out here and we're going to offset it this distance here, the two by four and the, and the four by four. And then the same on this side. We're going to do that for all four corners. We're going to check its fit and then we're going to attach it. So we've, we've measured a little bit and we've uh, actually measured twice. We're about to cut. Probably going to measure again before we cut because that's the right thing to do. Um, we've got a five inch offset on each side. So we're going to take our, our hand miter saw and we're going to miter cut these out. We're going to test fit it, make any adjustments, and then we are going to secure it to the bottom section down here. Alright, so we've got our offsets cut, we've got it laid in, we've got it fitted. You know, for having done that with a handsaw, I'm pretty happy with it. Um,
Now we're going to take a couple minutes. We're going to mark out our holes. We're going to drill them, offset them, and then we're going to screw this on. And we'll be ready to move it inside. The next part we're going to do is we're going to start with a pegboard. We're going to add a pegboard because pegboards are essential to a workbench. We're going to use these three foot by one by ones to mount it on. And I repurpose this from something else because recycling is a good thing. And we're going to mount it to the back of the unit. I'm going to do this out here just because I have to do to drill a couple of holes and I don't want to put crap all over my carpet. Okay, so we've gotten this finished. Uh, we put the pegboard on. I used different screws, some galvanized screws because they were a little bit shorter, a little bit bigger head uh, so they wouldn't go back to the back of here. And then I've just attached it simply with two of the same uh, backing screws that I did with the whole project really. Pretty secure. I'm really pretty happy with it. We're going to move it inside. We'll pull out the bench I was using, put it next to this before we do go inside, and uh, we'll talk about why I did this as opposed to what I was doing and why this is going to work better in an apartment setting. All right, so this is what we started with in my apartment. Um, it worked. Um, I might utilize it for something else like a uh, lubricizer or something like that. But it didn't have a whole lot of storage. So this is what we ended up building was this actual full-size bench where I can do a lot of my stuff standing up. Uh, in my apartment, it doesn't take up a whole lot of room, it's just in the living room. Uh, I could move it into the bedroom or the closet if I wanted to, but this is pretty much where it's going to sit. Um, a lot of storage down there for my tumbler, media, my sonic cleaner, uh, powders, different die sets and things like that. A lot of space up here behind my Beatles pictures um, that you could uh, hang any number of things for the project that you're particularly working on. So. Really simple to do. It took about an hour and a half to put this all together. Uh, cost me 60 bucks.